Hey, happy Sunday, Rock Church family and friends. Uh, Hey, even though we are scattered in our homes and even across different states and nations, I tell you, I'm so thankful to the Lord that we get to gather together this morning in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Maybe not the presence of each other, uh, but the presence of the Holy Spirit. Man, it's so good to be here. Uh, You know, I I just want to celebrate God is on the move in a significant, significant, Significant way. We had some meetings uh, as a leadership team this week just talking about the different things uh, that God is doing. And it's so exciting to see uh, that God is not limited by an online platform. We serve a limitless God. I had a conversation with someone just this week uh, that watched our online service, gave their life to the Lord, and is looking for a way to get connected to community. Um, I also want to, I'm the children's youth and college pastor here at The Rock, so I do want to give a shout out also uh, to our our youth team that's meeting with our high schoolers and junior hires on Zoom on Friday nights. Uh, And I want to tell you that also is a work of the Lord to get junior high boys to focus in on a conversation about the Bible uh, with all the distractions of things going on online. Uh, If you are a junior high boy, I love you. You're amazing. Uh, But God is moving. I also uh, want to encourage us, uh, our children's ministry team uh, is going to start next week while service is going on. We've heard word from a lot of parents um, that they need some help focusing and having some activities for their kids while our our live service is going. We're going to open up a private Zoom room uh, with our children's ministry teachers for kids to have a children's ministry breakfast next Sunday morning. So we're excited about all the things God's doing, uh, and I'm excited to teach this morning out of John chapter 15. If you want to open your Bibles there, I want to have a conversation this morning about what to do in a pruning season. What do we do when it's a season of pruning? Uh, Morgan and I have uh, some plum trees in our backyard and and we have two massive, uh, they're kind of like these yellow plum trees. And and one of them is particularly overgrown. It's growing into our neighbor's yard. It's touching our neighbor's roof. And and so probably about a year ago, uh, we decided that we wanted to prune it, uh, but we're not professional pruners. So by pruning, I mean just hack off some of the long branches that were going into our neighbor's yard. So we started cutting it down. And as we were going, we were like, you know what? Uh, We should just like take down this whole tree. We have another one. This one's clearly overgrown. It's touching our roof. It's touching our neighbor's roof. Um, But uh, we are not that committed to yard work like many of you who I'm sure are watching. So we got about halfway and said, hey, we'll finish this later. Uh, A year later, we have not finished it. And I just looked out uh, into my backyard as I was preparing for this message on pruning. And I had this terrible realization that I think our tree that we pruned last year is actually larger this year than it was when we started pruning it. And there's just something about nature that when you prune it, it makes the space for more fruit. And the same thing is true of our spiritual lives, our relational lives. When there's pruning, God is making way for more fruit. Jesus himself says this in John chapter 15. If you want to read along, um, or I think we're going to post it in the comments too. Jesus says this in John 15, verse 1. He's sharing this message with his disciples on his way to the cross. So these are some of his last, final, significant words about how to live a life in him after he's gone. And he says this. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, and every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. Come on, that's good news this morning. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. I want to encourage you, if you're in this season and you feel like, man, there's been some pruning that's taken place, maybe some cutting off of finances, uh, some cutting off of regular rhythms, regular relationships. Some of us have even experienced not just an external pruning, but an internal pruning of attitudes of our heart, like fear and insecurity and scarcity mindset. I want to encourage you. Jesus says this, if you're experiencing pruning, number one, you've been bearing fruit. That's good. Uh, But number two, if you're experiencing pruning, Jesus says it's to make the way for more fruit. And I want to encourage us, healthy things 
plants and people experience all types of seasons. There's seasons of pruning and seasons of growth, seasons of planting, seasons of watering, seasons of fruitfulness, seasons of harvest, and also seasons where it seems like all there is is a barren ground and we wonder if there's even seeds underneath it that are gonna grow. Uh, Jesus makes room for every type of season in the life of following him. Paul actually says it this way in Philippians 4 in a verse you might be familiar with. He says, I know what it is to have little and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Man, that's good news. Paul says he's learned in season, any season, high season, low season, harvest and pruning, uh, we get to be content and satisfied in God's love for us. But I want to uh, give us three practical ways because I don't know about you, um, but it's easy for me to find out what to do in a season of fruitfulness. Man, when things are going well, when the finances are coming in, when the job opportunities are endless, when all of my relationships are great, when my prayer life is just awesome, in a season of fruit, it's really easy to know what to do. You have fun, you celebrate, you go with it. Uh, but for me, finding out what to do in a season of pruning is a little bit more hard. What do you do when you're losing things? What do you do when things are being stripped away? Uh, so I want to give us three practical tips, and I want to get as practical as possible this morning uh, in this time we have. And my tip number one, what to do in a pruning season, is number one, pay attention. Pay attention. Uh, we naturally resist hard times. Uh, we naturally uh, just want to kind of get through it. And we have a get through it mentality. Kind of just uh, look down, uh, try and make it through it, forget the hard things. And we kind of, I think, tend to think, I don't know if it's because uh, we're humans or just maybe we're Americans and we think that if we work hard, everything's going to go well for us. Uh, we kind of have this mentality of if things are going well, everything's good. But if things aren't going well, something must be wrong. And all we need to do is just work harder and then it's going to get better. Um, but I want to encourage us, uh, maybe not encourage us, but share the truth that that's not a, a biblical mindset. Jesus actually says in this world, you will have tribulation. Being a disciple of Jesus doesn't mean that we get smooth sailing all the time. Being a disciple of Jesus means we get the joy and privilege of following him and being with him in every season, not just the good ones. I mean, let me say that again, because that's even encouraging from my heart. Uh, being a disciple of Jesus means we get the joy and the privilege of following him and being with him in every single season, times of fruitfulness and times of pruning. In fact, the word disciple uh, in Greek actually directly translates to learner. Uh, being a disciple of Jesus means we're seeking to learn from him what he's trying to teach us in every season. So it's not that if things aren't going well, something's wrong. Actually, as disciples of Jesus, if we're not learning what Jesus is trying to teach us in a season, that's when things are going wrong. I want to encourage us, instead of asking, how can I get through this, ask, what is God teaching me in this? Yeah. It's a great question to ask in a pruning season. Instead of asking ourselves, how can I get through this? Ask, what is God teaching me in this? Let me say it another way. Instead of looking at where God isn't, look at where he is. And it's really easy in a pruning season to be overwhelmed by the things that we're losing, areas that God used to be in, but maybe his grace isn't quite there anymore. Stop looking at where God isn't. Look at where God is. Paul says it this way in Colossians 3. He says, set your mind on things above. And I want to tell you, I've heard, I shared some at the beginning, so many good news reports of God showing up uh, with, as Dr. John said, mailbox miracles, uh, things that God is doing supernaturally in this season. I've heard stories of families uh, practicing communion every night at dinner time. 
Man, that's where God is right now. He's in your family doing communion at the dinner table. I've also heard stories of uh, parents getting really frustrated with their kids and being home all the time, kind of uh, that, those, those internal frustrations rising to the surface. Uh, I would say that's another example of where God is. He's working on refining our hearts in this season so we look more like him. I want to encourage us also, uh, pay attention to where God is, um, but also pay attention to where, what God's pruning. Pay attention to what's being stripped away, whether it's finances, relationships, certain rhythms. Uh, those are external things God's pruning, but what God does a lot of times is he prunes external things to surface areas in our hearts that he wants to prune. And I've had to face in myself a lot more fear than I ever knew was in here. A lot more insecurity, a lot more of a scarcity mindset than I ever knew before. I want to encourage you, uh, pay attention to those things that God is pruning away. Name them. Number two, encouragement. Number one is pay attention. Number two is this, in a pruning season, pray. In a pruning season, pray. It's actually the instructions that Jesus gives to us in John 15. He says, those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. He actually says a pruning season isn't an invitation to go faster. It's actually an invitation to go slower and abide in him. So I want to encourage you, if you feel like your life has slowed down and you're getting frustrated, if you're like me and you love just go, go, going, uh, Jesus actually invites us to slow down and abide and rest and pray in a pruning season. But some of us are so much better at looking at what's in front of us that it's really hard for us to stop and look what is. I remember uh, when I got my, my driver's license when I was 16, uh, they, they told me that what I needed to do was basically keep a car length in front of me for every 10 miles an hour I was going. So for instance, if I was going 60 miles an hour, I needed to keep six car lengths in front of me, uh, 40 miles an hour, four car lengths, and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. So of course, I focused a tremendous amount of energy in my first year of driving, keeping the exact right number of car lengths in front of me. And I was so focused on looking at the cars ahead of me um, that I got into a habit of running a few red lights. And, uh, and I, I don't want to scare any maybe moms that are currently raising their teenager to drive. I eventually got over it. I learned to not just look ahead of me, but look up at the stoplight and stop. But man, isn't that what it's like so many times for us? We're so good at looking at what's ahead of us, we forget to stop and look up. And a pruning season is an invitation to not just think about the future, but to stop and look up at God is and what he's doing. In fact, the word abide actually means you can directly translate it to remain, rest, or stay. Jesus's invitation in a pruning season is to stay. Stay with him, to rest in him. And for some of us, that's a complete mentality shift about what prayer actually is. Uh, prayer isn't problem solving. Prayer is surrendering our problems to God. And I don't know about you, but for me, I am so prone to bring the Lord my to-do list, my list of things that aren't going well. But what that is, is that's like me as a 16-year-old driver just looking ahead instead of stopping, surrendering, and looking up. Uh, Ronald Rohrheiser says that prayer is relaxing into God's goodness. I want to encourage us as a church family, what are our rhythms of prayer in this season? Uh, I think that this pruning season where services have been stripped away in some sense, even showing up to work for a lot of us has been stripped away. What if we came out of this as people of prayer with new rhythms of prayer birthed in our lives? I want to encourage us. It might not be as hard as you think. I mean, just in practical ways, as I've been talking to people about rhythms of prayer in this season, uh, I, I've seen a lot of people take up prayer walks in a new way. I want to encourage you, go on a prayer walk. Uh, walk around your neighborhood. Maybe even take your kids with you and pray for different houses as you pass them. 
Um, another thing to do is one of my favorite spiritual practices is the practice of Sabbath, uh, which actually the, the direct translation of Sabbath, Shabbat, means to stop. Uh, taking a full day to stop. And I want to encourage you, especially families of uh, young kids, Sabbath is not, taking a day off isn't like this leisurely, relaxing day at the beach where everything goes well. In fact, if you're a young family and you've tried to Sabbath uh, and it hasn't quite gone well, uh, I want to encourage you, Sabbath is less about resting and more about stopping. Uh, So for me, I've tried to actually turn all my screens off on a day off in order to discipline myself to not look ahead, but to stop and look up. Um, I've even talked to some young moms in this season. Their rhythm of prayer right now looks like any free moment they have. Instead of scrolling on their phone, they stop, take a breath, and pause before the Lord. That's what prayer can look like in this season. My number three encouragement to us, so pay attention, pray. My number three encouragement to us is plant. Plant. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, Maybe some of you in your spare time like to uh, Google the life cycles of plants. I'm just kidding. Nobody likes to do that in their free time. But I uh, Googled in preparation for this message the life cycle of plants. And right after pruning season is planting season. And that's actually the same in nature. Right after winter, the season where everything is stripped back, comes spring, the season for planting, the season of new growth. And I want to address a subtle thought, or maybe not so subtle, that I've had and maybe you've had too. And the thought is this. I've just got to get through this season so that things can be exactly the same as they were before. Confession time. You can just raise your hand in your house if that's you. How many of you thought that? I just have to get through this season so things can be exactly the same way as they were before. I want to challenge us. No, that's not a biblical mindset. That might not even be a healthy mindset. God prunes so that there can be more fruit. Israel had to leave Egypt to get to the promised land. David had to leave the fields to become the king. Israel had to leave Babylon to rebuild the temple. The early church had to leave Jerusalem to plant new churches. Jesus had to leave Gethsemane to go to the cross. A pruning season is an invitation to leave an old way behind and see what God wants to birth that's new. So I want to encourage you in this in-between moment of leaving behind an old normal and looking ahead to the promised land. Let's take some prayerful time as a church family, as individuals, and just pray and say, what is the fruit that I want to see when this is all over? What is the harvest that I want to see to come? And how can I plant seeds that are going to get me there? As a church family, we talk a lot uh, about being an Acts 2 church, a church that is uh, living the mission, not just on Sunday morning, but on Monday morning, a church that knows how to be a family beyond the building, break bread in homes. I can't help but think that this season is a season of learning how to do church in our houses so that we can see a harvest of house churches in the days to come. I know for me, I want to see a harvest in my life of being a person of prayer. What if this season is a season for us to plant seeds so we can be people of prayer, plant seeds of rhythms of prayer so that we can become people of prayer in the days to come? So that's my encouragement for us, church. Number one, uh, pay attention. Number two, pray. Number three, plant Let me pray for us. Jesus, I thank you for your presence in our homes right now. You know, I just want to take a minute. If you're you're watching this, uh, why don't you just close your eyes if you're able to. uh, Put your hands out like you're going to receive a gift. And just take a deep breath in and out. And become aware of the presence of God. He is so near to you. Father, I just ask for your grace right now in every heart in every home, to feel a tangible sense of your presence. You are Emmanuel, the with us God. Lord, I ask for your grace in a season where it feels like we've lost a lot. Lord, I thank you that you're still with us in this moment. 
I want to pray before we close here for a couple specific things. If you are uh, struggling with discouragement in this season, I want to encourage you to just put your hand on your heart. Lord, I pray for every heart that's been discouraged. Lord, I pray for the gentle nudge of your spirit to keep going. I think of 1 Peter, uh, where Peter says, put all your hope in the revealing of Jesus Christ at the end of the age. Lord, I pray for grace that we could look not just at this present season, but look up at you. Um, I even want to pray specifically. Uh, and again, if you have any specific prayer needs, feel free to email us prayer at rockofroosevelt.com. Um, I want to pray specifically if you're struggling with even mental health issues in this season, Lord, I pray uh, for even a release of serotonin in brains. Um, Lord, that you would bring uh, an increase of mental health. God, we break the power of depression in this season. We break the power of anxiety. Lord, I break the power of even uh, just natural shoulder tension in the neck. Lord, I pray for complete peace in every home in the name and authority of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us, church. I love you. We love you. Uh, we'll see you for some of our uh, worship with the word this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 630, uh, 7 at 7 devotional, CM lunch breaks, youth and college, Instagram lives, uh, email or fill out our get connected form if you want to get connected to us. We love you, church. And we'll see you soon.